What impact do you think emotional health plays on your goal accomplishments? Are there some emotional reasons deep underneath the surface that are preventing you from being more effective, preventing you from getting more traction in your life? So do you want to increase the chances of and the likelihood of, of, of accomplishing more of your goals in, in your life? And again, do it in an emotionally healthy way for emotionally healthy reasons. What's shocking to me is, you know, man, I've, I've, I've literally read hundreds and hundreds of books on, 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 on goals and habits and leadership and success and all this stuff. Rarely, rarely, if ever, have I read a book where it talks about doing the emotional work prior to goal accomplishment. Or even, how about this, at least alongside of pursuing your goals. And I'm telling you, if you all incorporate emotional growth into your personal growth and development plan and leader development plan this year, I'm telling you, you will see an increase in your capacity, an increase in your freedom, an increase in your peace, an increase in your clarity an increase in your quality of thinking, the healthier you get emotionally. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. Entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers, welcome to episode 101. What? Super excited about being in the 100s. For so many different reasons, we are going to be covering uh, on today's episode how you can hit most, if not all, your goals this year. Or another way to put another way to put it: How can you increase the chances and likelihood of accomplishing your goals this year, and maybe even being more effective and getting closer to accomplishing more of your goals than you ever have been in the past and to do it in an emotionally healthy way. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Super excited about this um, for for a number of reasons. One is, is just who doesn't feel better when you accomplish your goals? Who doesn't feel even better when you accomplish your goals in a healthy way? For me, I've only known, you know, kind of one way to do that and that's being emotionally unhealthy. I've, I've hit a number of goals in my life, but again, for, for most of those goals, I have not come from an emotionally healthy place when doing that. And so it, it, it kind of did not have the same experience if I had come from an emotionally healthy place. So hopefully this episode will, will, will really encourage you to, to really be effective this year, maybe more effective again than you, than you ever have been. Thank you all for joining us. Again, some of you all may be watching us on our YouTube channel, EQ for Entrepreneurs. Some of you all may be listening to us right now on our podcast, EQ for Entrepreneurs. Thank you all so much. And I really want to encourage you all, go back through some of the previous episodes. Check out some of those interviews I've done. I'm blessed to have a wonderful network of amazing, amazing folks uh, that, that, you know, some of my college classmates, just some of my 
just from, from networking and stuff, some amazing people with amazing stories, inspirational stories of change and growth and real life transformation through their own emotional growth journeys and how they're implementing emotional healthy cultures in the organizations and emotionally healthy families and just so many wonderful episodes. So please go back and check out some of those previous uh, episodes and or interviews you know, in the event you have time because, you, you again, there's phenomenal, phenomenal lessons to be learned and insights to be gleaned in some of those episodes. If you are ready to take your emotional growth level to the next level and really be serious about growing this year in, in, in 2021, then I'd really encourage you to check out eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA to get on the waiting list for our course that we're going to be doing an eight-week course coaching folks, teaching folks how to grow and develop your emotional awareness and emotional intelligence and emotional health. So check that out again, eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA. All right. So I've got my notes here in front of me. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see me looking down a little bit. I've got my notes out here. So I want to make sure I hit everything. How many of you all have set New Year's resolution, New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals, right? Probably lottie dotty, everybody. <laughs> so, and, and so now I'm going to ask you a series of questions here. Of those years that you've set New Year's goals or New Year's resolutions, what percentage of your goals did you complete each of those years? What percentage of your annual goals do you not typically accomplish? How long does it take before you fizzle out? What kind of goals have you hit? What kind of goals have you not hit? Have you ever done an analysis of your goal accomplishment effectiveness? Have you ever looked back and done in the military, we used to call it an after action review, an AAR. Have you ever done an AAR on the goals that you set for that particular particular year. This would be a great time to do that for last year's goals. How did you do? Ask yourself some of those questions that I just asked you while evaluating your last year's goals. Now, obviously last year was, was quite an exceptional year for a lot of different reasons. So, you know, don't, don't hold yourself to the fire too hard because again, last year was was quite an anomaly based on uh you know yeah just based on the year that it was <laughs> okay so here here's something again some encouragement i want to share with you i have changed one thing and that one thing has already increased my goal accomplishment effectiveness exponentially and i'm not being hype man i'm not trying to blow smoke up your nose uh, I'm not trying to get you, you know, riled up or or excited or whatever. I, I, I'm being, and I'm I'm going to give you tangible, tangible, practical results that have changed in my life that have transformed as a result of me changing one thing. Of course, and that one thing is my emotional health and my emotional intelligence. So as a result of changing that one area, that my emotional health, emotional intelligence. It has impacted every single area of my life, y'all. And I want more people to experience this type of transformation in your life. I just wish I hadn't started as late as I did. I'm thankful that I started, right, better late than never. I hope you all get this message before before I did. I get, And I've said this a number of times. I've lost 40 pounds and kept it off for six months. After struggling with my weight for 30 years, y'all, and 100, 75 to 100 different diets, why do you think I wasn't effective? Because I was not emotionally healthy. Who would have thunk that my physical health was directly impacted by my emotional health? I sure didn't. For four decades, I didn't think that they were connected. But sure enough, so if you're not physically where you want to be and you've been struggling in this area physically, there's probably a deeper reason 
And it's probably not, well, your your willpower is just not strong enough, or maybe you're just not disciplined enough, or you're just not focused enough, which are all the stories that I used to tell myself, oh, you just don't want it bad enough, Noble. You just don't want it bad enough. And, and, and I'm an athlete. I am legit. Now, I'm not saying I'm a world-class athlete, but I'm, I'm an athlete, and I could not get my, my stuff together. It was because, unbeknownst to me, there were emotional issues that were preventing me from getting traction in this area. Now that I've been, you know, three years into this emotional growth journey, boom, down 40 pounds and have held it off for six months. And when you've struggled with your weight for 30 years, y'all, six months, and, and, and my my track record of success with those diets, again, I had a my average time of being able to to last in a diet was like three days. And, and and for so now that I'm the fact that I'm six months in, guys, I, I can't tell you what a massive victory this is for me. So that's one area. Another way that 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 I have been that my you know I, my life has been transformed as a result of my emotional growth journey. I've been consistently attending Brazilian Jiu Jitsu classes at Prime BJJ in Colorado Springs now five to six days a week for six months straight after struggling with consistency for the last probably two decades. For the last 20 years, I've struggled with consistency. And the last six months, I've been able to be very consistent with my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, as a result, again, of my emotional growth and emotional healing journey that I've been on. Number three, our marriage has improved tremendously because I'm now more emotionally present, available, consistent, and predictable. I was the opposite of all those prior to my emotional growth journey. I was not emotional present for my wife or daughter. I wasn't emotionally available. I wasn't Heck, I wasn't in touch at all with my own with my own emotions or feelings. I wasn't emotionally consistent. I wasn't emotionally predictable. I would, if I got triggered emotionally, which happened a lot, I would regress into my emotional man cave for days, de- literally days, and, and and in some cases a week, up to a week of being completely emotionally unavailable. Nobody was home emotionally. Imagine living in a house with somebody who's not emotionally available. And some of you may. Some of you may be living in a house with somebody who's not emotionally available. What's that experience like? Just ask my wife. Hey, how was it having a, a an un a, 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 an unavailable, you know, an, an an emotionally unavailable husband for 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 decades, guys? It's crazy that we're even still married. Because of how how clueless I've been emotionally, and and then of course try you know bring that of course in the workplace being un you know bring, being being unavailable emotionally for your for your staff for your company for your organization for your clients for your customers, that I mean how how much fun is that I mean you, you it's it, it's once you become aware of this stuff man it's it's no fun being around a a, a a human being that's a that's a piece of cardboard that's that's completely unavailable emotionally there it's like it's just no it's just no fun there, there it's 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 very stale and stiff and, and awkward and uncomfortable oftentimes when you're around somebody that that is emotionally unavailable and and I feel for those people because again that was me that was me I'm trying to help people not be in that spot anymore so our marriage has improved so so much as a result the number of times I get triggered anymore has dropped by at least 98%. And when I do get triggered, the 2%, the remaining 2% when I do get triggered, I only go to maybe a 3 or 4 instead of all the way to a 10 to full Hulk mode. Excuse me, prior to my emotional growth journey, I would get triggered regularly And I would go immediately to a 10, immediately to Hulk mode. Now I get triggered again, 98% less. And even when I do get triggered, it's, I go up to maybe a three or a four 
on that scale, which, I, I, you know, what, what impact is that on my family? To not have to walk around on eggshells like, oh man, is he, is he going to turn into Dr. Jekyll or Mr. H-? Like, what, what, what noble are we going to get today? So thankfully, thankfully, man, that's another area that 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 um, that I have been, you know, tangibly transformed. Another one, my communication in my marriage has 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 improved, and 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 you know, also in business, my communication has improved. What impact or what role does communication play in relationships, guys? I, I would argue that's that is the that is the foundational element in relationships, period, in my opinion. I, and, and I know I could get some arguments from, from Christians. I'm, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus, which is another area I've, I've completely been transformed in. Well, well, but as long as you have Jesus, you have everything. Well, have how many Christians have you met that have Jesus that are terrible at communicating? A ton. I've met a lot of them. So, you know, not obviously not that, you know, communication is not my is not my savior and is not my salvation plan right jesus is my is my personal lord and savior you know <laughs> i'm just saying you, you, you communication you, you know after jesus for me personally after jesus you need communication <laughs> let me just say it that way this is another way to say it jesus without communication is 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 very is is almost putting Jesus in a in a cage. So yes, you may be a Christian, or if that's your faith background, uh, uh, but if you have no communication, man, you are seriously limiting your faith and 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 and, the, and your impact on other people. So so communication is 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 huge. And and here's the thing in my in my in my marriage and in relationships, I would never tell my wife what I was thinking or feeling. Because I didn't think I had any value or self worth. Why would I communicate when I don't matter? That's how I felt in my marriage. I I didn't feel like I mattered in my marriage or relationship. I didn't feel like I had any value or self worth. So why would I communicate? What does it matter if you, right? You don't you don't take care of what you don't value. Why would I? Why would I? T- you know, I I didn't I didn't value myself. I didn't feel like I had value in my marriage in my relationship. So I didn't communicate. And, and think about again being in a relationship where one of the one of the spouses is not communicating at all. How how long is that relationship going to last? And if it does last, it's not. I mean, you know, you could argue it's a relationship, but it's really, you know, it's 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 yeah. I mean, I would I would argue that it might not even be a relationship if there's no communi- if if one party is not choosing to communicate. And now I communicate how I feel. I communicate what I think. Now I'm I'm not a hundred percent. So please, yeah, please. That's my monster disclaimer. Please do not think I've I have like arrived in my emotional growth journey. But even just with the with the with the three four years that I've already been very intentionally growing, it has already been uh, the landscape of my life does not even look the same three to four years ago based on. The, the 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 growth and transformation. So communication has has you know my marriage has has changed. My parenting, are you joking me? My parenting has changed. You know my 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 um, we've got an amazing amazing daughter. She's she's thirteen years old, and you know being you know a teenager. What what's it like having a teenager? So the blessing is. We have, and my wife has been very intentional at at teaching our daughter about her own emotional growth and her own how to identify her own emotions and how to process her own emotions and how to manage her own emotions since she was probably three or four years old. So you know, after you know, t- you know, nine, ten years of 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 working on that herself, man, she is phenomenal at identifying and processing and managing her own emotions, which, you know, I, I'm learning this stuff, you know, now, you know, and she's, she, you know, she, she has been doing it in her childhood. And so my parenting, I, I, I you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm calmer. I'm, I'm predictable. I'm emotionally predictable and emotionally, I'm, I'm emotionally stable. And, and children need that. Children need 
an emotionally stable, emotionally healthy environment to grow up in. It's already volatile enough being a teenager. All the hormones and the, you know, all that, you know, it's just, it's, it, you know, the environment that they're already growing in. And so to, to not only be able to give her those tools to cope and equip, you know, equip and, and, and her on, on coping and, and, and handling her own emotions, and but also being emotionally stable and consistent myself, so that I, I'm again. I already told you about how, how I'm I'm not triggered nearly as much as I used to be. Well, that impacts my parenting. That impacts our house, our environment, the culture of our house. It also impacts the culture of our of, of my businesses and the teams and the different people that I work with and coach and that kind of thing. So it's impacted my parenting. We intentionally walked away from $90,000 last year just so that we could be in a more emotionally healthy environment and space to have the freedom to pursue new goals. Financial freedom without emotional freedom is still bondage. Financial freedom without emotional freedom isn't freedom. It's still bondage. So I yes, obviously money is important. Proper and wise stewardship over your finances is important. Here's the other thing too. Our finances have improved tremendously. I had a massive, massive emotional block around finances. And until that was healed, which wasn't that long ago, man, I, I was very financially, emotionally dysfunctional. My, my, I've shared this in some of my earlier podcast episodes. My parents, I remember when I was six years old, six, seven, eight years old, I, I was upstairs in our, in our house in, in Illinois and I, I heard this pandemonium ruckus going on downstairs. Like, what is going on? Come running downstairs, my, my little teeny Hispanic mom, four foot ten, is hiding behind the, the kitchen island crying and screaming my six foot three and a half six foot four 285 pound dad is standing in the middle of the kitchen literally throwing pots and pans and chairs against the walls breaking stuff shattering you know yelling and screaming my dad was a big teddy bear like what on earth caused him to go from teddy bear ops to King Kong ops, freaking out, losing his mind. After the dust settled, I realized they had an argument around this thing that I had never been from, you know, familiar with called money. In my little six, seven, eight year old brain, I made a vow, a commitment, a promise in my little brain, I didn't realize this wasn't conscious. I made a vow that if this thing called money can turn my angel, saint, teddy bear of a dad into Satan, I want nothing to do with money. Money is bad. Money is evil. Mo like money is kryptonite. And literally throughout my entire e adult life, I wanted nothing to do with money. And I never knew why. I never knew why until, again, we started this growth journey. So what, what impact has that had on my life? Are you joking me? To be a business guy and wanting to avoid money? I mean, you know, right? Like, and and, and that's, that's another area of where I would self-sabotage is that area. Again, I didn't even, it was, none of this was conscious, y'all, because I never did the emotional work, the emotional growth work. So what, what impact has that change had in our life? It's been it's been game changer. Another one, my relationship with the Lord is improving tremendously. I I cut off my relationship with the Lord when I was man, my late or no, I'm saying I want to say probably in my in my no, I was 30. Is is probably when I stopped my relationship with the Lord. I cut it off because we had just begun, we had just I had just become financially independent. So you know, we replaced my wife's income when she was 27 years old. When we replaced my income at age 30 from our businesses and stuff like that, I stopped working a job so we can go full time in business. Well, 
we because I had again no EQ, I had no balance at all. I was we were working our businesses harder than ever, and I completely got burnt out and stopped doing everything. Stop! I stop! I became I literally like a vegetable on the couch. I, I just I'm like I, I can't even think straight. We've been working so hard. I want to take time off. Well, that time off turned into weeks, months, and years off. And I I knew because I had a performance based relationship with the Lord, which again I hadn't realized at the time. And because I had stopped performing, I'm like I'm done. I know God's done with me. He doesn't love me anymore. He's mad at me. He's angry at me. I'm a sinner. I stopped working. I stopped performing like he's done, which again is all jacked up. But because of my emotional unhealthiness, I who would have known that my emotional grid, my emotional worldview, if you will, was limiting and directly impacting my relationship with the Lord. So now that I'm emotionally healthier, in fact, I'm, I'm reading a book right now. Check this out. It says, it's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. It's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. That book is called Emotional Health, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality by Peter Schizero. Highly Highly recommend it if you have a faith background. It has been life-changing for me and transformational. Transformational, y'all. Another area that, that I've been impacted, another goal I've hit, another resolution I've hit, another goal I've hit. We started this podcast and have been consistently putting out two episodes a week for 50, probably just you know, right around 50 weeks, 52 weeks straight. And I never started one earlier, a podcast earlier, because I struggled with imposter syndrome. And I was paralyzed by, listen to this, y'all. Hey, this is a true story. Future haters. Guys, I can't even tell you how many goals I have not hit in my life. I have not even pursued because of future haters. How insane does that even sound? But listen, what was my grid? A hardcore people pleaser addict. Well, if you're a hardcore people pleaser addict, you can totally see how, well, snap, I can totally see why you wouldn't pursue anything or do anything. And that's 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 exactly why. I was scared. I was terrified. Well, man, well, what if somebody doesn't like me? What if somebody uh, uh, thinks I'm a waste of skin or a waste of oxygen? Right, because that would confirm what I already know. Right, you see how all this emotional stuff, y'all. This was what was going on inside my being. Well, now that I'm emotionally healthy, the the bigger you 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 get in anything, in in success, in life, in business, the more haters you're gonna have. Well, now thankfully I'm an emotionally healthier spot where it's fine. I'm totally fine with haters. I'm totally fine, and we've and we've got them, y'all. We we have got them, and that's okay. That's absolutely fine. They have absolutely every right to to hate away. <laughs> it's totally fine, and so. But even me just saying that is a victory, y'all. I would never have said that before my emotional growth journey, and so again, we've we've been consistent with our podcast now for for a year, and and we're. Uh, just over 22,000 downloads, which is uh, I'm so, so thankful for. Next, we taught a brief class on, e- so another huge goal, big giant goals we accomplished last year. We, we taught a brief class on emotional health and emotional intelligence to the United States Army Recruiting Command staff. We taught a brief class on emotional intelligence to a group of senior homeschool leaders in classical conversations. Uh, we're, I'm putting together right now an EQ leader development program for a group of 10 senior executives for an international company, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty large company. I would have never done any of those events because I would have 100% self-sabotaged my success. Prior to my emotional growth journey, the closer I got to success, the more I would start to self-sabotage. Because, oh man, well, 
imposter syndrome. Oh, well, they don't want to hear from you. Oh, you've got nothing to add. You have no value to add. You're, you're, you're a terrible leader. What are you going to teach them? You don't have anything to teach them. You've got, right? This was all the scripts that were going on in my being prior to my emotional growth journey. So those are a handful of the goals that I have hit just last year as a result of our emotional growth. I have never had this much traction in my life ever. I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to hype you. I'm not trying to, uh, 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 I'm, I'm being, I mean, I'm, tr- I'm being s- so real. The, the, this is the most traction I have ever had in my entire life as a result of, of see, you know, asking God to help me on this emotional growth journey and be very intentional and consistent with this emotional growth journey. So what impact do you think emotional health plays on your goal accomplishments? Are there some emotional reasons deep underneath the surface that are preventing you from being more effective, preventing you from getting more traction in your life? So do you want to increase the chances of and the likelihood of, of, of accomplishing more of your goals in, in your life? And again, do it in an emotionally healthy way for emotionally healthy reasons. What's shocking to me is, you know, man, I've, I've, I've literally read hundreds and hundreds of books on, 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 on goals and habits and leadership and success and all this stuff. Rarely, rarely, if ever, have I read a book where it talks about doing the emotional work prior to goal accomplishment. Or even, how about this, at least alongside of pursuing your goals. And I'm telling you, if you all incorporate emotional growth into your personal growth and development plan and leader development plan this year, I'm telling you, you will see an increase in your capacity, an increase in your freedom, an increase in your peace, an increase in your clarity, an increase in your quality of thinking, the healthier you get emotionally. And I I rattled off a bunch for you, tangible, tangible ways, just last year alone, y'all, of how this journey has impacted me. Again, if you want to take your your growth to the next level, check out eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA and get on that that waiting list, get some details about our eight-week course to help grow your emotional intelligence and get emotionally healthier and emotionally more fit this year. Remember, emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally.